Welcome. In this video, we're going to look at how triggers can be used to turn flashcards into a concentration or memory game. Let's begin by previewing the basic mechanics of the game. When the player matches a word with a picture, both are grayed out and disabled. When all eight text cards are matched with all eight picture cards, the game is over. This game consists of a grid of 16 flashcards, one reset button, one shape that tells the player when they've made a match, one shape that tells the player when they've won the game, and two counters, one to count the number of moves and one to count the number of matches. Let's start by focusing on the triggers for the reset button object. As you can see, there are several triggers for this one button. However, most of these triggers are essentially the same, with only slight variations. The first trigger is telling flashcard number one, or button one, to return to its normal state when the reset button, or button 19, is clicked. Notice that the 15 triggers that follow only differ in telling a different button or flashcard to change back to its normal state. The next 11 triggers set all of the variables in this game back to zero when the player clicks on button 19, the reset button, thus resetting the game. The final two triggers set the match and you win shapes to the disabled state, which makes them invisible to the player. As you can see in preview mode, the variables revert back to zero, the flashcards return to their normal state, and the match shape state is disabled, causing it to disappear. Now we're going to focus on the triggers for one of the flashcards, in this case, button 9. Once you understand the mechanics of one flashcard, you can just copy and paste the entire set of triggers for each flashcard and make minor modifications. For each flashcard, we have three possible click events. We can create a number variable, in this case, pair count, to determine if the end user is clicking 1, the first flashcard, 2, the second flashcard with no match, or 3, the second flashcard that matches the first flashcard. Button 9 is a flashcard containing the text for butter. Ultimately, it will match with button 10, the flashcard that contains the picture of butter and also uses the butter variable. To address this click event, we have two triggers that say that both buttons 9 and 10 will change to a disabled state if button 9 is selected after button 10. A third trigger will add a value of 1 to the variable match count. The next 15 triggers will address the click event of button 9 as the first button or flashcard clicked in a possible pair of buttons or flashcards. Thus, these triggers reset any non-matching pair of cards from their selected state back to their normal state. Scrolling down, we can see that the next 15 triggers are basically the same. 
The only thing that changes is the button number. Every button or flashcard should be on this list except the current button that is clicked. In this case, button 9. The next set of triggers set each variable, except the butter variable, back to zero. This coupled with the previous set of triggers ensures that only a maximum of two cards are in the selected state at any given time. The rest of the cards should either be in a normal or unclicked state or disabled and already matched state. Our final two triggers are the same for every flashcard and focus on the match and you win shapes. The you win shape is changed to the normal or visible state when the variable match count equals eight. The match shape is changed to the normal or visible state when the state of button nine is disabled or matched. Let's take a quick look at the normal and disabled states for both shapes. Again, the normal state is the visible state, while the disabled state is the invisible state. This first trigger is exactly the same for all flashcards. It disables the match shape so that it's cleared before trying to match another pair of cards. The next four triggers simply change the state of button 9 from normal to selected and increase the relevant variables by 1. Increasing the move count and pair count variables is the same for every button or flashcard. The butter variable will change depending on the flashcard. The final three triggers remaining on this list are calculating triggers. The first two triggers reset the pair count and butter variables back to zero, signaling that the first card of a potential pair has been selected. The third trigger adds one to the variable butter, signaling that this card is waiting for the player to choose the second card. To randomly shuffle our buttons or flashcards, at the start of each game, Click on the Slides tab at the top of the toolbar, choose Freeform Question, choose Pick Many, and click on the blue Insert Slide button. This will create a new slide called Pick Many. A Form View tab and a Slide View tab will appear above the Trigger section of the Pick Many slide. For this game, delete the correct and incorrect layers at the bottom right corner below Slide Layers. At this point, the form view of the Pick Many slide is blank. Copying all the objects from the original slide and pasting them to the slide view of the Pick Many slide enables the option of loading questions in the form view. Click under the choice heading to populate each field with each button or flashcard from the drop-down menu. It's important that only the game cards, not the shapes, text boxes, or the reset button are selected for these fields. By going back to the toolbar and selecting Answers from the Shuffle drop-down menu, we can ensure that our game cards will be randomly shuffled for each game. We can now delete the original slide. Finally, to add audio to each of our buttons, select a button, click on Edit States, choose the selected state, and insert an audio file. Let's look at our final version in preview mode.
Thank you for choosing Gamboodle. This completes our series on Articulate Storyline Buttons.